How's it going, super friends? Welcome back to my channel and to my simple no frills review of the Batman Missions Blast Attack Batman and Bat Cycle Pack from Mattel. I've reviewed most of the Batman Missions figures and stuff by this point. I didn't get my hands on the Riddler yet. I got a friend that's sending it to me, Mary and Vince from Very Mary Vlogs. They're going to be sending it to me, but honestly, I've reviewed most of the stuff from this series, even the Batmobile, which was really cool for their six inch figures. Anyway, here's what the front of the box looks like. You've been looking at it the whole time. We'll turn it around around and you can see the other goodies on the back what a cool looking image of batman on that bat cycle that's really nice a very good posture <laughs> he's not leaning forward at all you got instructions on here on how to make the little blasty action work you gotta squeeze the pump and then it fires and then we have an image of the batmobile which previously mentioned i reviewed and then also you can put the little blasty thing down here on the side of the bike or batman can just hold the giant cannon in his hand and break his arms here's the bottom of the box it's got all this stuff on the bottom that ain't nobody care about and of course the barcode which some people do so there it is then this side which is boring and this side which is equally boring all right cool let's pull them out now mm. look there's a finger pokey uh. Ooh, turn to open. Well, that was easy. There's the cycle. And we just got the Batman to pull out. <sighs> and once you've struggled to get everything out of the package, here's what you get. Wait a minute. Nope, that's not an actual accessory. <laughs> that's the button thingy. Once everything's out of the package, here is what you get. The bat cycle, Batman, the pumpy thing, and the little rubber darts. These little rubber darts, they're the same as the ones that came on the Batmobile, the same, the blue ones with the little rubber tips. I actually like these more than Nerf darts because I love the squishy rubber tips for these. Let's just get one right in there, right off the bat, and test it out. These things are always fun. Let's shoot it right at Batman. Hey, Batman! It didn't even hit him. I'm a terrible aim. Let's try again. Yeah! Oh great, I lost the dart. There it is, never mind. This little dart gun has a lot of power. Like, look at this! And here's the cycle, which is really the main reason why I wanted to buy this, because y'all can never have enough bat cycles that fit six inch scale figures. And this is possibly one of the coolest bat cycles I've ever seen. It has a hint of comic book accuracy with a touch of artistic license and voila, you end up with something that's very cool. If you're a customizer and this light blue or metallic-ish looking stuff bothers you, you could always just paint that yourself. But, you know, this is a very cool looking, very Batman-esque motorcycle. And I do like it very very much let's stick the little darts on the side here because as you can see they can go there not the batman would want to be riding around with the equivalent of missiles <laughs> on the on the bat cycle but essentially that's that's what it is so i guess you've got the cycle there and then you you can put this thing here right here on the front just like that i don't know how the heck batman would see how would he depress the squishy thing would he cocoa butt it would he like headbutt the squishy thing? And then also, as they wanted us to know, we can actually stick this on the side of the bat cycle as well. So that, uh, I'm not really sure how useful that would actually be. I can shoot something to my left on a 45 degree angle. If you're to my left on a 45 degree, no way, you there, you please move over, stand in the way, get, get to a 45 of me. Thank you. Bam. And as for the figure, I really like this in comparison to some of the other variants. Like if you know me at all because of, you know, watching my videos and hearing me talk about how much I really don't usually dig the variants, this one's actually really cool. I get a really steampunkish kind of vibe from this one. Like like this Batman should be hanging out with Spider-Man Noir. Maybe it's the goggles, maybe it's just the all black color scheme with the kind of gun metal chest or whatever. I'm not really sure, but I think that this figure looks absolutely fantastic. Let's get a close-up of Batty McBatmanson. Yeah, that's really interesting looking. I like that a lot. It's the same basic sculpt that we've already seen used before. Like, I believe that these forearms are from the Night Jumper or whichever. The one variant which I didn't actually care about, but <laughs> Robert loves it. He was blue and gray. I think that the chest is... I don't even know. I don't even know. Hold on. Let's get the others. 
Okay, so now we've got all the other Batman missions figures in the house, except for I swapped heads with that one. But essentially, these are all the basic Batman missions figures. And you can see that this Batman figure actually shares a large number of sculpted details, but also has a lot of his own. For example, this Batman clearly shares the same boots with the original and also this Batman missions figure on the far left shares the same belt as this one, and also shares the same torso and upper arms. However, his forearms are actually completely unique to him. It might look at first glance like he's borrowed the same forearms from this Batman, but he actually hasn't because this one actually has a completely different set of details at the top of the gloves in comparison to this one. So these are actually uniquely sculpted to this Batman figure. And the same thing goes with the upper legs. He actually doesn't share the same upper legs with any of the other figures. And of course, the head sculpt is completely unique as well. So we're dealing with a figure that has a lot of new sculpted detail, but also unapologetically does use some of the other pieces from various Batman figures that came before it, or possibly came after. I'm not really sure where this one falls in the release lineup. As for the articulation, I think we all know what it can do, but I'll run through it very quickly as well. Ball peg neck, swivel hinge armpits with a reasonable range of motion. Shoulder pads kind of get in the way of the upward range of motion, but you know, they're ball hinges, so they're going to do what you expect them to do. No bicep swivel, but a swivel at the elbow, which is also a single hinge that you don't have a hope in heck of getting it to go 90 degrees, but it is what it is. Spinny wrists that also have a hinge that goes back and forth. 360 tornado waist. Your basic forwards and backwards city standy peg legs. Knees, single hinge, back and forth. And that's it. That's all the articulation that this Batman has. Now, as for the bat cycle, I don't have very many other bat cycles to compare it to, but I do think it would be fun to compare it to the ones that I do have. Here we have the bat cycle from Justice League Action. It came with a Batman figure. I've pulled all the blue pieces off because I wanted to use this for regular six inch scale figures. It's kind of small. It doesn't really work, but it's still a cool looking cycle. Nonetheless, we'll wheel that guy out of there and we'll wheel in the bat cycle that is from the Batman Evergreen line. Remember? The one that had the figures that looked like this? Yeah, that's who that bat cycle goes to. And then finally, I can wheel in the bat pod from Mattel's Movie Masters line. A very cool Mattel product indeed. This thing went for a small fortune on eBay after sitting on the store shelves and no one wanting it, and then all of a sudden it blew up on eBay and became something that was like a hundred bucks. Either way, here it is, and that's how it compares. And that's really it. That's all the bat cycles that I have to com compare it to. I don't have an extensive bat cycle collection. <laughs> You're looking at it. And then finally, I suppose it's prudent to show you how well the Batman figure does or does not fit on the bat cycle. And you can see he fits just fine. I mean, I guess he's designed to, so it would be weird if he didn't. He has very, very good posture, just like the pictures. Like, usually you'd imagine Batman leaning forward with the bike and his feet kind of being more out behind him, but you know, it is what it is. I mean, this is a child's toy, and it's only going to be made so good. The figures only have so much articulation, and at least he fits. So, I'm curious. Let's try out another 6-inch scale DC Universe classic size Batman and see if he actually fits. Because a lot of you folks would buy this just for the Bat Cycle to see if you can use it with your Multiverse or DC Universe classics. Let's try. Hmm. And there we go. Yeah. So a DC Universe Classic scale figure will fit indeed on this bat cycle. No problem. So for those of you who have been looking for a DC Universe Classic scale bat cycle for a millennia because they never did release one in that line, you have a candidate right here in this bat cycle. So even if you really don't want this figure, if you're not interested in the figure, I would think that the bat cycle may just pique your interest. Yeah, cool. And I think that's it. That's my simplistic review of the Batman Missions Blast Attack Batman and Bat Cycle. If you found this video interesting, useful, insightful, or even a reasonable waste of time at all, please take the time to leave a like, leave any comments you have down in the comments section below. If you want to see more of my hands and face show up in your inbox, then I invite you to become a super friend and join the DC Squad today by hitting the subscribe button. And if you do, think about dinging the bell so you get notified of when I put out new videos. And I'll see you with the next one. Have an awesome day, super friends and take care.